I do care what you do with this information because it is important to our survival as a species. It's important to our planet. It is important for the world. It was from last Saturday I was doing a radio interview on some guy's show. And Jordan Maxwell calls in to that show in the final 10 minutes of the, the program, and we got to have a bit of a back and forth. So it's pretty enter entertaining and exciting. Um, I, I suspect it was kind of a setup thing because that whole interview was really a, a setup, trying, and it, it, just a bit of a backstory. The guy who was just doing the, the interview here is named Matt, and he did a documentary film about the life of Jordan Maxwell sort of glorifying Jordan Maxwell's life and stuff. He never ended up releasing that film. He, he he traveled to L.A. and got the footage of Jordan Maxwell and everything and hung out at his house and all this stuff. And, and um, But I can't remember exactly why he said he didn't release the movie or whatever, but for whatever reason, he didn't. But he was, as you can imagine, not too happy with me when I released the Jordan Maxwell debunked. And that's been years ago now, and he's never really... Uh, gotten over that I guess so the last this is his last show his last radio show and he you know told me he wants to I can't think of a better guest to have on my last show and all that stuff so I get on there and it's all about uh, the Jordan Maxwell thing which um, anyway so which is cool like I said Jordan Maxwell calls in the final 10 minutes of the program and this is what happened all right welcome back to the broadcast it looks like Jordan Maxwell called in I'm going to say right now we've only got 10 minutes here so let's both be respectful and uh, let's try and make the most of the 10 minutes uh, Jordan Maxwell are you with us yes I am Matt and I just happened to get a phone call someone was listening to the program on cable and so they called me and I've been listening to well I, um, I wish I could have had you on on a better night Jordan I will say that well that's all right highly offended that things are taken out of context and, and charges are made against me out of context. And, uh, you know, to say that I was frightened to death uh, of, of these entities and yet, then I said, oh, I will do whatever, whatever you tell me to do, that's totally ludicrous. If you, listen, if you are brought in before the President of the United States or the Queen Mother in England, you're naturally going to be apprehensive and kind of a fearful because of who you're going to be in the company of and what you're going to do. Well, wait till you are visited by an angel of God. Believe me, the Bible says many times people were very fearful when an angel appeared to them and they were frightened. So it's a natural and normal reaction if a person is, a, is you know, in the company of an angel of God that they would be frightened and fearful. But the same Bible also says that those people who were frightened by, uh, and fearful in the presence of an angel also said, what is my Lord saying to his servant, and what am I to do, and, and uh, whatever you tell me to do, I will do, and honoring the great spirit who has sent you. And I'm frightened at your presence, but I will do whatever I'm told to do. So, you know, it, there, <clears throat> it's, it would appear that he's trying to say that there were some aliens here and that I was frightened to death. No, I was highly, highly respectful and fearful in the presence of a great spirit. And, and yes, and I've but said... But you did say things, quite yeah. often, sorry, sorry, but you did say quite often that, that these things emanated fear off of them. You said that in a number that's of occasions. Right. In that that's particular... exactly right. But, but that's different between a holy reverence and an eminence of fear. No, 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 no. If you ever have an angel from God appear to you, you will, uh, you will have the same effect. It will have the same effect on you. Because these, the are, these are very powerful entities from another world. They're angels from heaven. And they, if they appear to you, believe me, you are going to feel it emotionally. An and angels appear in bodies. Angels, uh, as you have pointed out, they're plumbing works. The angels, when they appear in the Bible, do no, not no, require... No, 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 you're they totally they, wrong. They, they, no. they said we can entertain angels unaware. However, no. in the other case, we no. see, we see no, demons not, are desperately no. seeking embodiment. They, but, they, but they you're talk, you keep talking, but you're not allowing me to talk. You are, you're mixing up names and words. You're mixing them up. There's a world of difference between angels and sons of God. The sons of God are totally different than angels. 
The sons of God are the ones that came up to Abraham's tent and sat down with him and had dinner, which we're told in Genesis 18. They looked like handsome men, and they were called the sons of God. And they went off. Oh, that, that term in the Hebrew, Beneha Elohim, like is mentioned of, of Adam. It's actually mentioned of angels as well as the divine council. And then in the New Testament, it's mentioned of believers. The, the corresponding factor to everybody in the Bible that's called Beneha Elohim is that they are direct creations of God, I'm like saying, Adam, and and like saying. angels, and like the believers in Christ. Let him answer. All I'm saying is that if you are ever visited by a spirit entity, an angel from God, you are not going to find it to be, oh, interesting that you drop by, nice to talk to you. No, you will feel in your spirit that you're in the presence of a mighty power, and but, it will be fearful, unless, of course, you're not bothered by such things. I but am. that's exactly the same I'm thing when they show up in the room and sleep paralysis and different things. When people are into the occult and these things show up in the room, and they're obviously not angels. They're, they're demons or, or and, and pretending to be all kinds of things, but they're obviously jumping on them. In some cases, there's rape and different things like that. Those that's, things also... That's not what we're talking people. about, Chris. We're talking about what... But how do you know? How do you know that's not what we're talking about? Well, we let Jordan finish here. He's only got five minutes. Well, all I'm saying is that you're putting words into my mouth, and you're saying that I am something. All I'm saying is I was fearful. When you come into the presence of an angel... You're going to be fearful, undoubtedly, with no doubt that you've never had uh, an occasion where an angel came to you because you've never experienced that kind of feeling. But I'm telling you, if ever an angel of God were to appear to you, it's not going to be a lackadaisical thing. Believe me, anything which comes from God that appears to you, Believe me, you're going to feel, it's going to spiritually react on you, and you're going to feel fearful because they, because of the power that emanates off of angels from God is very powerful, and you will feel it. And then if you've got any sense, if it comes from God, you say, well, whatever it is that you're, you know, tell me whatever it is I am to do, and I will do it, bending your spirit and your will to God, that's not saying, oh, I am frightened to death of these aliens and I will do whatever. No, you are putting words in weaving a story which has nothing to do with what actually happened. But basically and you're saying that they were thing, good, that it's okay thing, because they were good. But it, the Bible says, and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed in the angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Well, and you're like one not of his appeal, ministers. They pretend to be good. You are and the one issue of is his saying, ministers. And you're one of his ministers. No, I'd you say are one of his ministers. The context there, Jordan, is that these things appear as angels, but they're not. They can be not. The, the how do you is, know it was not an angel? How do, how you, do know you know that it did was? not do anything? I mean, how do you, you know? You don't th know that. That's true. You don't. Say, you don't know. You have no idea, and you don't know. You what are the consistent there. things that they that they, that that what has that your uh, work has done is to deny to to say that the Bible is wrong, that Jesus Christ cannot save you, the gospel. All right, uh, is I only not have true. a couple of minutes left. Uh, I only have a couple of minutes think left. Do you think it's a demon, or do you think it's I an angel? I only have a couple of minutes on. left. I only have a couple of minutes left. Let me just have the uh, a few moments. One thing, you're talking about me and the, being a part of the Illuminati and all this stuff. I would say that <clears throat> you would not even know about the secret societies. You would not even know about the Illuminati. You would not know anything about the world conspiracy if it had not been for me. Before you were born, young man, before you were born, I was out in a world going around the world talking about Illuminati, secret societies, world governments, Federal Reserve, all the, all the Bible stuff that's going on, the mysticism in government, the occult. Before you were born, young man, I was out there on the world and lost my family, lost my wife, lost everything in my, uh, that, I, uh, that a man could lose by putting myself out there on the front line to awaken my fellow man only to discover today that people like you have now come to decide that I am working for the Illuminati. If I were working for the Illuminati or the evil archy, I would at least be able to pay my rent and have a shower. I, I have never I've said you were. Years, Matt, I sure. was living for 14 years in a room that had no shower. I had no income. 
I, uh, I, lived I think of, that, of I think that the same people. thing happened when you started with that guy summoned the UFOs back back in the day when that guy showed you and gave you the Charles M. Fort book. That's when it started. You're a true believer, Jordan. I've always thought that you think that what you're doing is good, but it, it's just something that you can obviously tell that those angels weren't good. The message isn't good. You are being used to to spread the one message that the New World Order does really care about, and that is turn away from Jesus Christ at all costs. Okay, now, that's what you've done. Let's let Jordan have the last word here we've got a minute jordan and I, let me say one last word the jordanus maximus i think we've already cleared that up and i have nothing to do with that whatsoever so i would expect you to apologize to me for spreading that rumor because it is totally untrue i never picked the name jordanus maximus and you wouldn't know anything about jordanus Jordanus Maximus, myself, I put it on my website. That's how people knew about Jordanus Maximus is because I, Jordan Maxwell, put it on my website. I'm the one that told the world about it. Now, if I was going to be fooling people by taking another name, why would I broadcast it on my own website? It doesn't make any sense. Why would I do that to myself? I'm the one that told you about Jordanus Maximus. You didn't find it out. I told you about it. And I said on my website, it was a fluke. I've never heard of such a thing. I thought it was funny. I thought it was clever and silly. So I put it on my website and said, I don't know what to think of this. This is silly. This is crazy. I said that on my website. But there's mm-hmm. something Absolutely. about Jordanus Maximus. We're going to turn around. It's you turn point. around and say that that's where I got my name from. That's ludicrous. And whether you, you did or not, whether you did or not, it, it, it's you still you have, every day you, you hear should. the news. As an American citizen, I'm sure you're concerned. And that's where the interview cut off. Um, so I do want to extend an invitation to Jordan Maxwell, an indefinite invitation to come on the show to talk about whatever you want to talk about for as long as you want to talk about it. Um, you know, I promise it'll be really civil. I don't have an axe to grind with you. But if you want to talk about these issues point by point, I would be more than happy to to do that with you. You can email me at nowheretorun1984 at gmail.com. 